Okay, so what we're going to do today is try to get some of the twist out of this limb. It's not a lot, but you can see when you look down the down the pipe here, there's like almost no twist in the limb. And then when you come back, you can see that the limb twists, starts to twist about here with the, it's pretty much standard right through here. There's actually a lot of twist right here, but that's a static portion. I'm going to fix that on its own. But just in the bending portion of the limb, it seems like it's from about here back. Let's see if you guys can see that here. I'll hit it from a few angles. And let me show you how I'm going to do that. How I'm going to fix that. <clears throat> so, first thing I'm going to do is reposition the stave in the, in the press. And the idea is I, I don't, from what I can see, like I said, the twist starts about a little bit short of halfway up the limb. So I'm going to block that area off where the, there is no twist or minimal twist. And we want the whole, this aspect to just come this way and just match up with the rest of the limb if we can. If we can get it there. So, that's gonna do it. All right, so. This is the expensive tool I use, if you haven't seen it before, that I use to get twist out. So I have a wrench on a string attached to a bucket. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to put that right like that. I'm going to add some weight in a minute. Before I add any weight, now I'm going to apply some heat to the bow, to the stave. Just gently heating it, but you don't want to scorch the bow here. Start adding some weight. Starting to move. Let's give it a little more weight. Yeah, we're not ready to stop yet. It's not there, but I'm going to stop the video for a second. We'll come back when it's done. So, All right, so now we've still got a lot of hills and valleys here, but most of the twist is now gone. The next step of the game here, you can see it's deviating to the right at the end. 
So we're going to have to fix work on that and get this thing straightened out, but that's how you get rid of the twist. You can see the main body of the bow. It's still kind of uh, rough, but compared to what it was, the twist is pretty much gone. All right, so that's twist. We'll be back with more straightening later. See you soon, guys. Mike from Boyer Bow. Okie doke. At this point, guys, we've got the bow shaped out. You can see how narrow or thin the uh, static limbs have become. But if you look from the side, they're going to be thicker than the rest of the bow. So it's it's even though they're very narrow this way, they're pretty got they got some girth this way. And. This line was just to remind me where the fade started and finished. Got a little work on the handle. And again, got some thickness there, but not a lot there. Looking down the bow, we've got pretty much straight. I mean, it's got the undulations in it, but tip to tip, through the center, it's probably going to be pretty good. Um, there still is a little bit of twist in it, so I'm going to play with that a little bit, but we'll, uh, we'll work on that. And, uh, we're pretty much ready to start. It's floor tillered. Let me show you what, for those of you who don't remember, floor tillered means when you push it against the ground, it bends. So, give you a ground shot here. Basically, when you come against the ground here, got some bend. Now, while I get here, I still look for any major stiff spots, or I look for major stiff spots or hinges at that point, but usually there isn't much. So, what we're going to do now uh, that we're at the point where it is bending in some degrees, I'm going to put the rawhide on the back of it. I, always, I pretty much always back now with rawhide, at least rawhide. Do you have to? No, you went to a single ring. If you were able to get a good single ring without any violations, you really don't need to go down to a, or you really don't need to cover it with rawhide. Um, these are, Osage makes its excellent, excellent self bows, which means it's backed only by its own single growth ring or backed by its self. Um, I like the rawhide for a little extra insurance it gives, as well as a little extra power, maybe. It's not like sinew where it will necessarily start reflexing the bow, but it is, I find it to be excellent material. Uh, I used to use other things, but now I'm pretty much exclusively rawhide. Uh, if this were a shorter bow, significantly shorter bow, I might go with sinew because sinew is actually superior. But given the bow, this bow is about 66 inches long, I probably don't need it. Um, why do I rawhide it now before I start doing the tillering process? Because if I tiller it, the rawhide could affect the tiller as well as the draw weight of the bow. So I want that to be in play before I start messing with it. Otherwise, Next video will be me putting the rawhide on the boat. Take care, guys. Mike from Boyer Boats.